That's complete bullshit. Oops, sorry about that. Hi guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Today I'm going to be talking you through my top five guitar players. And uh, it's not necessarily the best guitar players, obviously it's subjective as always. Uh, and it's not anything to do with who I consider is the best. It's more really the most influential guitar players um, that have had a big impact on my guitar playing. So my most influential guitar players. Um, before we get into that though, uh, I've had quite a few questions about the track that I'm playing now, the track that you can hear now. I've used it in a few other of my videos and it's a track from my 2010 album Inside Out and the track is called Inside Out. So if you like that, um, you can download the album from my website. Link is in the description box below. So make sure you check that out. I do, in actual fact, have a new album coming. I'm still finishing up the writing process because I'm writing new stuff all the time. You know, I write new stuff every day, pretty much. Uh, some of it okay, but not all of it. <laughs> but it's all important. Uh, but I'm liking the way that it's, the, the direction that it's going. Anyway, so let's get to my top five guitar players list. As I said before, this is really more top five uh, most influential players for me list. So, uh, this is not in any specific order. Number one, Joe Satriani. Any followers of uh, me that have been long time followers will know that I'm a huge Satch fan. Um, and I remember the first time I ever heard him play, my brother was responsible for it. He was responsible for a lot of my uh, particularly early influences and uh, he really turned me on to a lot of incredible guitar players. So I've got my brother to thank um, for the way I play now, to be, to be honest. So thanks, bro. Uh, yeah, Joe Satriani, the first album I heard of his was, in fact, the first track was, um, I'm pretty sure it was the Mystical Potato Head Groove thing and I was pretty impressed with that. Then he played me some other stuff. It was all off Flying in a Blue Dream. Then I heard the track Flying in a Blue Dream and it just blew my mind completely. I just thought it sounded totally magical. Um, it was incredible. So uh, Satriani is number one. Um, I much prefer some of the earlier stuff of Satch, but he's kind of, uh, even some of the later stuff, he always manages to write sort of gems on his albums. Um, I absolutely love Crystal Planet. Um, that's a great album. Uh, and I think The Extremist is one of the best instrumental rock albums of all time. Again, subjective, it's just my own opinion. Uh, you may not agree with that, but I absolutely love it. I love that raw rock sound on The Extremist. Just incredible stuff. So that's number one. Number two is Eric Johnson. And again, it's one of those moments when I heard him for the first time, I was like, who the fucking hell is that? That's incredible. To me, it sounded so cleanly played, almost synth-like in, in how clean it was. The attack, the tone, you know, so smooth sounding. I just couldn't believe it. Basically, it was the album Arvi Musicom. Um, it was a friend of mine, another guitar player, and uh, he had the vinyl rec record. And he said, you've heard Eric Johnson. I was like, who? Uh, this is going back to the early 90s and uh, he played me um, the intro to Cliffs of Dover and Cliffs of Dover and my jaw just hit the floor. I could not believe what I was hearing and I was just incredibly inspired by Eric Johnson so I went home. Um, he also let me borrow the, um, is it the Hot Licks video which I watched day in day out over and over again and learn it's one of the actually actually one of the only videos that I learned a lot of the examples off of um, I used to literally watch REH videos you know remember those the REH days some of you young guys may not understand that but some of the older guys may get this um, we used to watch those videos just for pure inspiration rather than learning the licks off of them so um, and yeah that was one video that I learned a lot of stuff you know, like finger picking style that I wasn't used to, you know, because I was shredding all the time. So it was a real big break from that, you know, and uh, it was incredible. Anyway, I uh, bought some of his other albums, bought Tones, his earlier album, which I think is a fantastic album, and uh, some of the later stuff as well. Um, and uh, as he released the later stuff, that is. And yeah, uh, absolutely incredible guitar player, incredible musician. Okay, so number three, Yngwie Malmsteen. First time I heard Malmsteen, I think, must have been his Fire and Ice album. 
I, although, having said that, I did hear him prior to that when I first started to play the guitar. And I was only, at this point, I was into, um, you know, sort of college bands like The Smiths and The Cure. I quite dig The Cure still. Uh, I think they wrote some great music, Robert Smith. Um, and, uh, but so I was playing, you know, open chord stuff. And uh, I remember my brother playing, again, my brother putting on some Malmsteen stuff. And I was like, hey, too many notes for me. <laughs> Uh, so typical response, you know, without giving it, giving it a proper chance. Um, but yeah, I think it was Fire and Ice, one of the first ones, uh, first Malmsteen albums I got. And then I bought some of the other stuff like Odyssey, uh, what was the other one, Eclipse. Uh, can't remember the names of them, I just used to look at the pictures going, how the fuck does this guy play like that? Incredible player. One of the things that got me about Malmsteen the most though was his intonation and vibrato just out of this world, incredible control. It was only years later I found out that he plays on eights, you know, and goddamn, um, a lot of people say that's easier to play, but in fact, you know, when you're playing on light gauge strings like that, for me especially, it's much harder to control intonation when you're doing string bends, man, because you've got to be ultra accurate. So, uh, yeah, Malmsteen, absolutely massive influence on my guitar playing. Okay, number four, Derek Trucks. Uh, this might be a bit of a surprise to use some of you guys, but uh, I'm hugely influenced by Derek Trucks. First time I heard Derek Trucks, one of my old students bought um, his album Songlines round to a lesson, and he said, check this guy out, he's incredible. This is back in the early 2000s, and it would have been 2004, 2005 time, some, something like that. And uh, he played me this and I was blown away. It just sounded so vocal-like, um, you know, the, with, especially with the use of the slide, you know, just incredible. And also the thing that really got me and still gets me to this day with Derek Trucks, with his solos, uh, they're so musical and they always, always build in terms of intensity uh, and they're just bursting with emotion. And I, like I say, I love the vocal-like quality of his playing. I think he's just an absolutely outstanding musician, outstanding guitar player. So for me as a solo, he's the perfect example, as a soloist, he's the perfect example of how, what solo, guitar solo should do. You know, I think in this day and age, we tend to have been, to be too wrapped up in, with playing technically and, you know, the guitar being the main focus of a song, you know. And I really like the, that approach where, you know, solo should really take the track somewhere you know, um, and he's the perfect example of that. Number five, Nuno Betancourt. Again, my brother was responsible for this. Uh, around about this time, the track Get the Funk Out came out. Um, my brother went and bought the album and I was very, you know, cynical towards any of that kind of music at that time. And, uh, you know, because I was young and thought I knew everything. Um, but, uh, you know, over time I grew out of that, of course. Um, but he bought Pornography, he, um, so it was the second Extreme album, and uh, I said to him, I remember, I said, what have you bought that crap for? You know, without even having, even having listened to it, you know, I'm making judgments, it's crazy. Uh, but he said, check it out, just check these solos out especially. Uh, and he played me the solos from Get The Funk Out and also uh, He Man Woman Hater, and um, literally I was just like, I don't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. And also the riffing on that album is just stunning. You know, uh, you know, I still listen to it now. In fact, occasionally I will do a little bit of the old sort of, you know, standing in the mirror with the guitar, miming the, you know, guitar parts of my favorite uh, guitar solos. And uh, the tracks off um, Pornography T, I still do that too, because I think some of those solos are utterly incredible. Um, so yeah, I got, after that I bought some of the later albums, you know, um, Three Sides to Every Story, all that, waiting for the punchline. Um, uh, but I still absolutely love Pornography. It's one of my favourite rock albums with just some mind-blowing solos. His rhythm playing, as I said before, is absolutely exceptional. You know, and he's still kicking ass now. In fact, all of these guys are. Um, so it's it really is still inspiring. So. Anyway, that wraps up this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I said before, these are five players who have had pretty much the most influence on my guitar playing. 
um, throughout my life so far. There's been many, many, many others, but those are really the top five guys uh, that have influenced my playing. If you've got uh, a favourite top five guitar players or top five that have influenced your playing, make sure you leave comments in the comment section below. Where else would you leave it? And uh, let me know which five um, have been most influential to your guitar playing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch up with you guys real soon. Take care.